Today we're going to be looking at how the RG405M compares to the Retro Pocket 3 Plus for GameCube emulation. As with all of these comparisons, this is a direct light for light comparison. Both systems run in the same emulators, same games, and the same settings. And both of these devices share the same internals as well. So as with the PlayStation 2 comparison, I don't expect to see much differences between the two devices. And as you can see with Mario Kart, both devices run this game really, really well. The busiest times tend to hit around about 50 frames per second, but quite often and most of the gameplay is around about 60 frames per second. And that's really great to see. And like with the PlayStation 2 emulation where both devices struggle a little bit, the RP3 Plus and the RG405M seem to handle GameCube emulation really well, especially when you consider games like Mario Kart. Moving on to NBA Street Volume 2, and this is a little bit different. Both of these systems do struggle with NBA Street Volume 2. And you can see both systems seem to run in equivalent frames per second. However, I will say the Retro Pocket 3 Plus does seem to hit closer to 60 frames per second a few more times than the RG405M. Maybe it's that specific game instance that I played through, but it definitely seems to be the case. I do find NBA Street Volume 2 though a very interesting use case because the gameplay does range from 30 frames per second to 60 frames per second seemingly all the time, which, which shows that this is quite a tricky game to try and emulate. Moving on to Super Mario Sunshine, and again, both systems running the game pretty much identically, hovering around about the 30 frames per second. And interestingly, this game doesn't seem to suffer too much at that point. You can definitely see some moments of stuttering, but for the most part, it seems to be a comfortable and enjoyable experience. Some of the more platform heavy situations might be a bit trickier, but what we can say is the RG405M and the Retro Pocket 3 Plus both do a very similar job in terms of dealing with this game. Moving on to Extreme G3 and a great game for testing high paced racing and once again both systems hovering around about the 40 frames per second mark. And again, interesting because it doesn't seem to affect the enjoyment of this game at all. Extreme G3 being such a high fast paced game, you definitely need to get that sense of speed. And whether the game is just so damn fast that the lower frames per second doesn't seem to affect it that much, I don't know, but I enjoy playing this game thoroughly on both of these devices. And moving on to Simpsons Hit and Run, once again, as we expected, both devices handling this equivalently around about 50 frames per second. And as we said in the PlayStation 2 comparison, this is to be expected because both share the same internals. But once again, the difference is the ergonomics and the feel of using a console with a different left analog stick position and the different shoulder buttons. And honestly, whereas I wasn't surprised to prefer the analog stick position, I am finding the shoulder buttons actually incredibly easy and comfortable to use on the RG405M. These types of shoulder buttons do present other issues when it comes to game streaming, which we will deal with in the follow-on review, but for PlayStation 2 and GameCube emulation, it was thoroughly enjoyable. 